Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video from Inside the Eve Echo's final test. Today we are looking at another type of thrasher. Yes, I know everyone knows that Captain Benzi loves his thrashers, but today especially I wanted to look at the Thrasher Guardian, more to talk about what a Guardian ship actually is, what they do, and what the shield field boosters are actually for. Now before we jump in on this one, of course, if you do enjoy this video or find it useful, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell to keep up to date on all the Eve Echoes videos I put out. I do aim at five a week, um, so 100% get subscribed, ding that notification bell to know what's coming, and let me know in the comment section below what topics you want to see me cover in future videos, what questions you have that you'd like me to answer, that kind of thing. I've always got a list going of stuff that you guys are asking. If you don't want to comment down below as well, do come find me on social media, whether that's Twitter, Facebook, Facebook, um, yada yada yada, and of course there is the Catskull Cartel Discord that you are all more than welcome to join. The public channels there are full of some really friendly people who love to talk about Eve Echoes and will help you out in absolutely any way, shape and form that we can. Finally, if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining me on Patreon. Every dollar really does help, so a huge shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have pledged, in, uh, pledged me on Patreon. That's a huge, huge help. Anyway, that said and done, let's have a look at this Thrasher Guardian. Now, Guardian ships are a little bit different to others. If if you were to consider like the logistics frigates, like the Burst, etc., to be the healers of EVE Online, these guys are kind of the tanks. And that comes down to this wonderful little fitting here, which is called a Small Shield Field Module. Now, these essentially put a big sphere around your ship that reduces all damage inside it. You can see here optimal range of 7.5 kilometers is the size of the, uh, the, the shield itself and it it's 44% resistance so all stuff coming firing through that shield gets reduced by 44% which is huge in fleet operations and yes it does affect the Thrasher itself. The difficulty though is if anything gets within that optimal range of 7.5 kilometers they will be able to hit you with the shield not taking any effect. It's like a bubble around you if they're inside the bubble, the, uh, the bubble itself does offer no protection. Other than that, though, the reason I'm looking at here on a Thrasher Guardian is because, as you see here under the roll bonus, it has a plus one maximum shield field module. That's a hard thing to say, shield field module. Um, only ships with that can, uh, with that stat there, that plus one to maximum shield field modules, can even equip one of those. If I tried to put that on a normal Thrasher, the game's going to tell me, no, sorry, that won't fit. In addition, being a Thrasher, it gets 25% small cannon optimal range, which is nice. You're not going to be really aiming to kill much. You're, you're supplemental damage more than anything in a ship like this. For destroyer defense upgrade you will get additional 5% shield which just makes you even tankier and of course for destroyer command a 7.5% increase in small cannon tracking speed and a 2.5% in small cannon damage which means at the full 5 there you're only going to be getting what I think 12.5% extra uh, damage. It, it's not much at all. This is not a combat vessel in the solo sense. You're not going to jump out into high level anom anomalies and tank them on your own with this. It's all about that uh, shield field module and I'm going to showcase that in a brief bit of time. For the rest of the fittings though I have gone for some nice small strike uh, strike cannons just because the extra range of those means I can stay close to the people I want to be protecting with the shield bubble and still shooting whoever I need to because of course I want to be staying close to whoever needs protection I've got an afterburner fitted onto here and because I want to stay alive as long as possible I've got both a mark 5 shield booster a shield extender and this wonderful adaptive invulnerability field which basically when you activate that whacks all of your shield damage resistances right the way up now, as far as I'm aware, that does not apply to the actual shield bubble that the Guardian ship itself is putting out, not to the shield field, only to the personal shields. But still, very nice just to keep you surviving that little bit longer. And the kind of the point is that when you're out in space using that particular bubble, that it, the enemy needs to be shooting at you first. If they're shooting at anyone other than you, their guns aren't doing much. So they kind of want to take you out first, which means if you've got one of these guys and then a burst behind you keeping you alive, heck, it's just just a really nasty situation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to undock. I'm not going to go into an actual combat situation because there's it, it, <laughs> it does rely on me having other people around but I can showcase the situation and how this actually works there. So if we come out into space you'll see that I have here in the top right 
That is the shield field module right there, and it's got a 99 and a plus next to it. That's because this thing uses units of fuel every time it cycles. It's not like other shield modules and that that just cycle on their own and that's it. They just keep going and using capacitor. This also uses fuel. Now, if I go into the ship's cargo hold, you'll see here I've got suspended plasma, oxygen isotopes, and plasmoids. These are all things that you get from uh, planetary interaction. By having these, um, you can go out to do planetary interaction, mine those off planets. These are what you use as fuel, and you can see here it says fuel owned on each of these, just as an idea of how much fuel each of those actually generates. There are different quality levels. Suspended plasma is only 5 gigajoules, whereas oxygen isotopes are 83 gigajoules, and the plasmoids are 191 gigajoules. Now, if I activate that shield, you'll see that it will start to use the fuel, and this little bubble goes up around me. Now, anything inside that bubble is now going to take reduced damage, and you'll see that that just keeps cycling, and that will start eating fuel as it does so. And that's ultimately what these bubbles do. So although you're not going to be going out into high-level anomalies, tanking them yourself and, you know, sort of kicking ass and taking names, you are going to be able to keep your friends alive in space for a significant portion of time. Combine a shield field module ship like this, one of the Guardian ships, with something like a burst logistics frigate, and just nothing on your team is going to die, and that's one of the great things about fleet operations. Now, of course, talking about the different types of Guardian ship, I'm using a Thrasher here because it's a destroyer, it's fast to use, and I have most of the skills that the bonuses come from. Um, you can, of course, look to other ships as well. If I go onto the ship tree here, up to cruiser level, somewhere in here there are some of the cruiser guardians as well. I've just got to check them all one by one, because I can't remember which ones are which. There we are, a rupture guardian. So if you want to go up to cruiser level, you can do, but then, of course, rather than a small shield field module, you're going to be using a medium shield field module, which, as you can see here from the roll bonus, this can equip gets medium cannon tracking speed, etc. These are your tanks for if you're going to be going up in, uh, in, in bigger fleets. For me, though, as I said, I like to use the little uh, the little ships, the frigates and the uh, destroyers, and I like to hang out in a frigate or destroyer gang. So you have someone with something like, mm, perhaps, say, a Kestrel, who's kiting, uh, a couple of Kestrels who are kiting with their, rock, uh, with their missiles. You have a Thrasher Guardian out there doing its thing and keeping that shield up around them. And then you have a Logistics Frigate keeping any incidental damage patched up as well. And those four ships can take down things massively out of their way. Now, we'll see if I can get some of the guys together, and maybe we'll try an anomaly or two doing that kind of stuff to really showcase what it's about. But I just wanted to showcase what the shield field modules were um, and how they work, how they operate, what they look like. Now, when I talk about the different uh, types of fuel you can use, if I go into planetary production, you should see here in this system we've got the different uh, the different planets here, and I'll see if I can find any of those. There we are. So N7BIY2 has plasmoids, and if you do press on that there, you can see that is what we would get for that particular one. Doesn't it actually show you that it's fuel on here, annoyingly, so you will need to have a look. I, I went through the market one by one and just long pressed on each of the different items to see if it said fuel on it and found that it was mainly the ones that I've got equipped now. You'll see, so if I go back into my hold, I can showcase which ones of those we were using. Yay, skill training. Always nice to have skill training. So there we are. So like plasmoids, oxygen isotopes, and suspended plasma. If you just long tap on those, you'll see that they are fuel there. It says basic info, fuel owned, five gigajoules, yada, yada, yada. And that's just how you know which one. As long as you're stocked up on fuel, it will keep working. And that's a really useful little module. I love these things to pieces. I think they're a great little addition to the game. And I do honestly think that if you have two of these overlapping with like a burst frigate behind, just nothing inside that field is ever going to take damage. And you can do some really, really high powered stuff with that. Anyway, until I get some footage of that, this is where we're going to leave it. In regards to skills for uh, shield field modules, I haven't yet to actually find any that do support the shield field module, so there doesn't appear to be any way to boost them with skills, which actually is pretty cool, because it means anyone can do this. If you just want to jump into a guardian ship and help support your teammates, you can do that at the drop of a hat. And it is the destroyers that you'll have a look at here for this. So obviously, Kaldari, Galente, and Amar do have their own versions of the guardian ships. I think it's a Catalyst Guardian, possibly, I can't remember, it's the equivalent of whatever a Thrasher is, um, Korax, I think, I'm pretty sure it's Korax for Kaldari. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for your attention on this one, I do hope you enjoy it, let me know how you get on trying out Guardian ships in space, if you've been using these, let me know what kind of cool crazy things you've been doing with them. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!